Welcome back to AM Northwest. Our next guest spent decades feeling socially awkward, hiding her tics, shutting down in large gatherings, and curbing her blunt honesty. It wasn't until she was in her 30s that she finally discovered why she felt so different. She was autistic. Here to share some of her story, we welcome the author of A Little Less Broken, Marianne Shambari. Good to have you with us. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you. At 30, some 34. Yeah. You had an epiphany. I did. Tell me about that. I did. And it's weird because I'd actually spent a couple years before the big epiphany mm -hmm. being kind of drawn to autistic content. Like I was obsessed with Hannah Gadsby and oh, I'd read yeah. books by autistic people and I babysat autistic kids. But then one day I was sitting at my kitchen table. I was 34 and I was on Instagram just scrolling. And a friend of mine, Delia, just posted a little video saying, my son was diagnosed autistic and it made me realize that I'm autistic and I just got my diagnosis. It's not like a mind blowing thing that she said, but mm -hmm. something clicked in me in that moment where suddenly like, <laughs> it's like that gif where like people are doing math, complicated math in their heads. Uh -huh. It's like that and suddenly like all the pieces and all the autism content that I'd been reading and watching over the years just kind of converged into this like, bowling ball that just hit me in the face and suddenly I was like oh wow. I'm autistic yeah and then a month later I was seeing a doctor and getting a diagnosis and it just all happened very fast but it was yeah. just that video that for whatever reason made me realize that all the ways that I thought that I was broken for my whole life just all kind of converged what made you feel broken well it's such a hard word maybe I shouldn't have used it but it the big one, the most visible one, are what I thought were tics, yeah. right? So, you know, blinking my eyes a lot, rolling my neck, flaring my nostrils, locking my knees. I have a million of them. And they've kind of come and gone throughout my life. Um, and that's like a very visible indicator that, like, this person is different from other people. Sure. But there were also things like I couldn't seem to shut my mouth ever. Like, I would just talk and talk and talk about things that I cared about. Um, I was super honest and I didn't have a lot of friends and they would tell <laughs> Sounds me. Sounds like me, but okay. Let's you know, keep, yeah. yes, exactly. I and got it's not that these are bad things. I right. think it's just like when it all converges and you have all these ways where you feel like you're just not like other people. Right. Um, like I couldn't, like in college, all my friends could go out to a bar or go to a frat party and I would completely shut down. It like, was too much. It was too much, too much <coughs> just sensory stimulation and I would just like close off like a robot and I would cr I would run outside crying or yeah. I'd have to leave and I just felt like why are all my peers able to do these fun things and I am you know crying off in the corner right you talk at one point you <coughs> went to meet somebody you were dating mm -hmm. at a I think was it an English pub yeah and yeah. and yeah once you got in there you just couldn't handle it yeah and you realize this is the there's something going on here yeah that's I mean that's exactly what happened and I tried really hard for about 30 mi minutes at that pub trying to have conversations with his friends and they would ask me questions and I wouldn't ask them questions. It's like I didn't understand the rules of how to have a conversation. Oh, interesting. Um, for some reason, like this is easier yeah. than like a social interaction at a bar because there's rules, right? You ask right. me questions and then I answer. Sure. Um, but the social expectations on top of the sensory overwhelm in that bar, plus this guilt that I'm, there's something wrong with me, my boyfriend's gonna leave me, just had me 30 minutes after that, I'm running out into the streets of London, just, you know, sobbing. What has changed since you found out about the diagnosis? I mean, once you realize this is, this is who you are, how does it help you? I mean, it, like everything's, everything's changed. It's how been so? the most important, like powerful thing that's ever happened to me. Um, the big one are the relationships between my myself and my daughter and myself and my husband. I used to be just a really um, kind of, I don't want to use the word violent, that's really intense, but I would g get so overstimulated because I didn't understand that I was being overstimulated yeah. that I'd kind of lose it, right? Kids make a lot of noise. So my daughter would be making a ton of noise and she'd be crying or laughing or touching me or whatever. And I would just like scream at her. At one point, I threw a plate across the room. I mean, there were more more than that one time where yeah. I'd thrown and broken dishes. When I realized that I was autistic, I suddenly understood, oh, these are not things that I can change. I am never gonna be the type of parent that can go to like a loud story time at the library. Right. Like that's not an option for me, so I'm just not gonna try anymore. Sure. 
And suddenly all that like anger and agitation was just gone. So now I have this better relationship with my daughter. Oh, yeah. My husband knows I can't interrupt Marion at any point because she's going to lose her mind. Now he knows that the interruption is, is just really, really jarring for right. me. So we have like a system now. So now I'm not snapping at him. I mean, these are really small things that could have just gone on forever and caused all these moments of irritation and anger and right. rage and shutdown that now no longer happen because we know why they were happening in the first place. Right. You also do better when it comes to work. You do better working from home yeah. because you're not dealing with all of that social interaction with other people at the workplace. Yeah, right? I mean, that work was a huge one for me where I was very frequently having meltdowns after a couple hours of being in these enormous open plan offices yeah. where there's a lot of noise, there's a lot of like hidden social dynamics and office politics that yeah. I could not navigate. Yeah. That by 11 a.m. at the office, I'd run into the bathroom. I did a lot of running and crying. So I ran into the bathroom crying because it was dark and quiet in the bathroom. And then I couldn't really work after 11 o'clock. But now I know I can only work from home. That's really the only option for me. And I'm lucky enough that I'm in a career that allows you to work from home. Right. Um, not all autistic people have that luxury. Um, but yeah, I get to be in my office with a door that closes and quiet and no one coming in to interrupt me and no dynamics that I have to interpret in the middle of also trying to work in the middle of also having done a long commute. It's, it's so much less complicated now. Oh, I, I've got to believe that. Do yeah. you think that you have you already helped people by having this book out like like your friend helped you? Um, I've actually, believe yeah, you, yeah, I do. I do have a story. It, it comes out on Tuesday. So I'm, I'm like waiting to see how people sure. receive it. But I do have a friend that shortly after my diagnosis, she we were talking about it and she's like, there's so much about your story that feels familiar to me. Mm. And I was like, look, Heather, I'm not gonna diagnose you or tell you what yeah. to do, but right. have you ever thought that you might be autistic? Because I've known you for a long time yeah. and we're very similar. And she was like, oh my God, no one's ever said that to me yeah. before. And a month later she was diagnosed wow. autistic. And then her son was diagnosed after her. So wow. I absolutely know that because our understanding of autism is so limited and right. so specific to like the mainstream, sure. right? Dustin Hoffman counting toothpicks as they fall right. to the ground in Rain Man, that because we don't see women who look like me who are autistic that right. often or publicly, yeah. we just don't know what it can look like. Yeah. And for, for me to see my friend Delia looking the way she does, acting the way she does, allowed me to see a piece of myself yeah. represented. And I hope that this book does the yeah. same. I know people. it's one in 36 people mm -hmm. are diagnosed with autism. Well, you've got a book event and I it's do. Tuesday night when the book comes out at Powell's at seven o'clock. We're gonna put all that information for you on our website at k2.com. The title of the book again is A Little Less Broken. Marian, thank you so much. Thank you so much. All right, we'll be right back with more AM Northwest. Don't go away.